The Boston Bruins have signed John Farinacci after he failed to sign an entry-level contract with his drafting team. And I'm taking issue with my locked-on NHL peers who ranked Bruins way too low in goalie and defenseman voting. All that and more on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, joined by Bessie, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be as well as take a look around the NHL. I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your day. And we are free and available on your favorite podcast app, on YouTube. Please do smash that subscribe button so that you never miss a thing. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more by visiting fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. And seriously, thank you for sticking with the podcast over the off season. I know it's, you know, been difficult to get into Bruins mode following that disappointing playoff loss, but I'm pretty excited about the season to come, the centennial, some new looks, and some exciting new players fighting for playing time with David Krejci and Patrice Bergeron having retired which I'm still not over yet but we move on and the Bruins are as well adding some center depth to the organization on Wednesday by signing John Farinacci now this is a guy who was drafted in the third round of the 2019 NHL entry draft by the Arizona Coyotes but For whatever reason, didn't work out for him to sign his entry-level deal, and now he has joined the Bruins. He appeared in uh, 19 games with Harvard last season, scoring five goals, adding 15 assists for 20 total points. He's six feet tall, 185 pounds, and is a very talented two-way center who could get a taste of NHL action as early as this season, more likely destined for Providence at this point. And it continues Boston's trend of filling out the prospect pool kind of uh, in reverse, right? Like they've gone through this period of trading away a bunch of draft picks in order to be competitive in the present. It's obviously hurt their prospect pipeline and they've been very active signing these guys kind of post draft or undrafted in the case of Mark McLaughlin, Georgie Merkulov, now Farinacci um, taking a once promising prospect who didn't no, still promising prospect who didn't sign with his drafting club and uh, seeing if they can, Uh, make something out of it and he does have ties to the Bruins organization his uncle Ted Donato was his head coach at Harvard and his cousin Ryan obviously a former Bruin as well he's gonna be engaged in talks with them to see what kind of tidbits they got from their time as Bruins Ted maybe a bit more positive than Ryan Donato who was of course traded to the Minnesota Wild in the Charlie Coyle deal. Now, again, 76th overall. The Bruins back in 2019 had a first-round pick that was used on John Beecher. They had a third-round pick later on uh, past where Farinacci went. And because he never signed with Arizona, he became a college free agent after four years of amateur hockey one season with muskegon three with harvard and for whatever reason he said it didn't work out but he had nothing but good things to say about 
the Coyotes, and the organization. Um, he finished his Harvard career with 25 goals, 61 points in 79 games. And after becoming a free agent, a deal with the Bruins came together pretty quickly in part because of his familiar with Boston and with the Bruins um, being in the area at Harvard. He obviously knew about the Bruins being in the area He did a bit of due diligence, uh, had some talks with a couple other teams, but for him, it was an easy decision that he's super excited about. Such a great organization like Boston will do wonders for my development, he said. Nothing could compare to the feeling of being part of the Bruins. He describes himself as a 200-foot centerman. Uh, Doesn't have to look far for great examples of players to model his game after he's missing out on the Bergeron Krejci era, but um, he's trying to trying to follow in their footsteps. He says he sees himself as that 200 foot centerman can play at both ends of the ice, good on face-offs can play any role that he needs to prides himself on being somebody who can do that. His hockey sense is probably his biggest strength. He said, And not to compare himself to Bergeron, but that's a guy that he has watched closely, tries to emulate his game after. Uh, The way he played, the game was amazing. That's the guy I try to play like as much as I can, he said. Which, I mean, if you're going to be a 200-foot centerman, if you're going to model your game after anybody, might as well be Patrice Bergeron. Now, the Bruins... Down the middle, we've talked about this at length this summer, a bit thin. Charlie Coyle, Pavel Zaka, Morgan Geeky, probably your top three centers. Trent Frederick might fight for some time at his natural position. The fourth line, kind of wide open. Do you go with the veteran and Patrick Brown, or do you give a guy like Mark McLaughlin, John Beecher, Merkulov, maybe Farinacci takes a po- uh, takes that post in training camp. It's a wide open competition and um, to add some depth at that position, you just can't go wrong. Uh, He was fairly highly touted and just looking at uh, Dauber prospects who I always like to visit, not only for uh, fantasy purposes, but just to get a sense of what people think about prospects they have his fantasy upside at 6.5 nhl certainty 2.5 so you know not a lock that he'll be in the nhl but certainly his chances are a bit better now that he's in an organization in need of center depth Uh, they call him a skilled offensive player strong 200 foot game has good leadership qualities so yeah fits right in with the Bruins model. They said he won't won't be a big name on the free agent market, but he could be a sneaky signing as he does offer some offensive appeal. So there you go. John Farinacci, now a member of the Boston Bruins, and we'll see where he fits into the organization come training camp. Coming up after the break, we are going to take a look at Locked On NHL host voting in player polls and discuss where they ranked Linus Allmark in goaltending and Charlie McAvoy when it comes to defense. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On. And right now, they have a pretty sweet deal when it comes to football season. Right around the corner, you can feel it in the air. And FanDuel is giving you a chance to win all season long. All you have to do is bet on a Super Bowl winner, and they will give you bonus bets every time that team wins in the regular season. So let's say you pick the New England Patriots to win the Super Bowl. You will get bonus bets for every regular season victory. And you can use those bonus bets on spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. 
Thank you so much once again for making Locked On Boston Bruins part of your day every single day, of course, through the month of August. And as we get close to training camp, we're down to three episodes a week. Next week, uh, I'll be off Friday, so expect maybe Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. We're going to keep looking at the which Bruins wore it best, numbers 9 through, oh wait, we still have to do 19 through 10, and then 9 through 1. We'll do that next week um, and bring you all the latest on the black and gold. All right, recently, the hosts of all 32 Locked On NHL podcasts voted in polls for a whole bunch of things. Best at each position, best players under 22, uh, best logos, which we discussed last week, uh, as well as best mascots. Today, I want to talk about the goaltending results as well as the defense results. And I'll go ahead and show you the top five goalies because it's uh, quite a thing. I guess there's a couple reasons. You could say that Linus Allmark coming off a Vesna Trophy season put up the best numbers across the board in the NHL. But he didn't have a super heavy workload. He shared the net with Jeremy Swayman and his playoff performance leaves a bit to be desired. So you could say that Allmark belongs in the top five because of his spectacular, almost otherworldly regular season. But you could look at his playoff numbers, his 888 career playoff save percentage. The fact that he was sharing the net with Jeremy Swayman and that he was playing behind the best defense in the NHL. One of the best offenses as well. Um, so did Linus Allmark elevate the Boston Bruins or did the Bruins elevate Allmark and help him achieve that goal of winning the Vezina Trophy? I mean, he's always been a pretty good goalie. He has a career save percentage of 919. But I think in the eyes of voters here among the locked on hosts, you know, he, he kind of flamed out in the series against the Florida Panthers. And not to say he's a flash in the pan, but there's some questions as to whether he'll be a one-hit wonder or if we'll be spinning multiple seasons on shuffle on Spotify playlists, right? Can he come back and elevate a Bruins roster that won't be as talented as it was last season, or will his numbers fall back to earth in line with the rest of the team? There's going to be some regression, certainly in terms of the standings points wise for the Boston Bruins. You know, Jim Montgomery won the Jack Adams, Linus Ulmark won the Vesna. Usually those two go hand in hand. It's going to be a big test this season for both Montgomery to navigate these post Bergeron and Krejci waters and for Allmark to continue to play at such a high level. The defense core, we've talked about it at length here this summer is intact. Jeremy Swayman still there as his goaltending partner. So the Bruins prioritized the back end 
as positions of strength to help keep the team afloat with the loss of some offense. And if we're here next year and Allmark again, at least in the Vesna conversation, took a somewhat depleted Bruins roster further in the playoffs, then yeah, he could be in the top five conversation. But for now, I mean, I kind of get it. I kind of see why he is not there. Now, for me, I voted him in the top five. I put the two New York goalies, one and two. Um, Hellebuck, number three. Allmark, four. And then I believe I voted for UC Sara. So, uh, looking at Andre Vasilevsky, he obviously has the pedigree. He has the resume. He's been one of the best goalies of the past five 10 years, got the cups, he's got the hardware, he's wearing down a bit with the lightning. Um, they really need to bring in, they could they could use a Jeremy Swayman to offset his workload. And, um, you know, they lost uh, to the Maple Leafs this year. He looked fairly ordinary for parts of the series, the games they lost, obviously. Uh, I don't see him as the number one guy. Those two New York guys, outstanding. Hellebuck, Saros, unbelievable as well. Ulmark, you know, probably belongs in that conversation because of his play last season. Where do you think Ulmark should rank? Let me know in the comments here on YouTube or uh, drop me a line on uh, social media at Locked NHL Bruins or at Ian C. McLaren. Coming up after the break, we're going to take a look at the defensive rankings and see where Charlie McAvoy ranked. Okay, we are back talking about the locked on NHL player polls and where Boston Bruins ranked among them. I forgot to mention uh, Jeremy Swayman also ranked on this list. Allmark was at sixth. Then you had Ottinger at eight, Alexander Georgiev, nine, Philip Gustafson, 10, Stuart Skinner, 11, Sergei Bobrovsky at 12, Jacob Markstrom, 13, Jeremy Swayman at 14. A bit low in my books. I'd put him over Bobrovsky. Nah, well, Bobrovsky, recency there. He had a fantastic playoff push as well. So that certainly helped. Uh, I'd put him above Markstrom for sure. Gustafson, Skinner, well, you don't know. It's an interesting conversation to be sure. But now we're pivoting to defense. And uh, here's a look at the top five defensemen on. You don't get a look at our boy Charlie McAvoy until number seven. He comes in seventh behind the five that I mentioned, as well as Victor Hedman of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, if Andre Vasilevsky was a legacy vote for goaltending, you could argue Hedman even more there on defense. I would not. I don't even know if I'd put Hedman over Mikhail Sergachev, who came in at um, 8, 9, 10, 11th on this list. As far as the top five goes, Kale McCarr, it's very hard to argue against him being at number one. He's a Conn Smythe Trophy winner, a Norris Trophy winner, a Stanley Cup winner. He's the NHL 24 cover boy as well. Clearly the best defenseman in the NHL at the moment. Eric Carlson, obviously he won the Norris this past season. Otherworldly offensive talent. His defensive game leaves a bit to be desired. And if I was voting on this prior to this past season, nowhere near the top five at this point. Obviously he deserves a bit of a bump. Got to put him in the top five if, like 
all Mark, I'm arguing that you have to take into account how good he was this past season. Uh, still, McAvoy definitely belongs ahead of Victor Hedman. I'd probably put him ahead of Miro Heiskanen at this point as well. Now, here's the thing with Charlie McAvoy. He has not, as of yet, blown us away offensively. He's not had anywhere near a, a point-per-game season or a um 80 point season but he's obviously incredibly strong at both ends of the ice uh, his career highs 56 points in 78 games 2021 20, 22 52 points in 67 games this past season missed a bunch of time due to uh, recovery from shoulder surgery he's not maybe the clear kind of number one power play quarterback that some of his peers are. But in terms of a complete game, physicality, defensive prowess, offensive capabilities, he's as well-rounded a defenseman as you will find anywhere around the NHL. Yossi, Fox, recent Norris Trophy winner, so you got to give it up for them. Hedman, you know, he's kind of on the decline last season by Sergachev in terms of adding the power play, getting top ice top. He won the Norris back in 2018. Mark Giordano in 2019. You don't see him anywhere near this list. Last four Norris winners, Carlson, Makar, Fox, Yossi. I'd put McAvoy up in that group, <clears throat> neck and neck with Heiskanen for top five uh you could argue that carlson could be bumped down a bit um we'll see how he fares in pittsburgh this upcoming season he should have better defensive numbers who knows if he'll keep it up offensively i'm not expecting another 100 point season what he did in san jose especially offensively was stunning and Obviously, his defensive numbers were down, but the team as a whole was was pretty bad. He's one of the best defensemen of this generation for sure, a multi-Norris winner. So I got to give him some respect for that. So we'll keep him in the top five. I'd go Makar, Fox, Carlson in the top three, I guess, Yossi, and then McAvoy, neck and neck. With Heiskanen, he's right there, uh, but uh, definitely ahead of Victor Hedman. Now, full disclosure, when it comes to, like, you look at fantasy stats, right? I had McAvoy in a salary cap keeper league where maybe he's not really worth $9.5 million in terms of his offensive output, shots on goal or a bit down, not really lighting it up it's huge on the power play. But when it comes to, like, the value that he brings defensively to an actual NHL lineup, it's huge. And he's worth well more than $9.5 million. I think um, Dom Rescission of The Athletic, uh, if you look at the contract efficiency rankings from July 31st, you look at the Bruins. He had the Bruins at fourth in terms of contract efficiency and he said both David Pasternak and Charlie McAvoy made the cut for the league's 10 best contracts as they both get the underpaid superstar treatment he has McAvoy valued at 13.3 million uh so real surplus value there for the Bruins and uh the contracts for Pasternak and McAvoy are steals in terms of overall play. Now, Hampus Lindholm got some love on this list as well. He came in, I guess, uh, 18th ahead of Evan Bouchard and Shea Theodore, behind Vince Dunn, Morgan Riley, Devin Taves, Brandon Montour, Alex Petrangelo, Josh Morrissey, Mikhail Sergachev, Dougie Hamilton, Quinn Hughes, Rasmus Dahlin. I'm sure the folks in Vancouver and Buffalo quibbling about the rankings for those two guys as well 
uh, a lot of talented defensemen around the NHL. Zach Wierenski didn't even make this list, mostly because he was injured for last season. But, you know, if I'm looking at replacing McAvoy with that $9.5 million on my fantasy team, Wierenski is an option because he will put up probably better offensive numbers than McAvoy, Heiskanen, uh, Sergachev, both available as well at reduced rates. So I might look at them as well. But um, yeah, there you have it. Let me know where you think the likes of Allmark, Swayman, McAvoy should rank on these lists. Drop a note in the comments. Hit me up on social media. And uh, again, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to today's podcast. Full disclosure, this was my second attempt as I had my mic off for the first recording. Rookie mistake, but we powered through and uh, we will talk to you again here next week on Locked On Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.